Hello there, Virgos. We're going to do your long view astrology now. So the long view means the outer planets, the transits or the planetary movement that's going to take years or has already been in motion for years in your chart, activating things in the long term, the big picture, the marathon. So we're going to take a look today at your long view of the outer planets and how it might affect the next couple of years for sure. So the big one is Pluto, but I'm actually going to start first with Saturn and Neptune in Pisces because for Virgo, the last several years with your relationships have been not easy, right? Neptune is passing through your seventh house, which is marriage or partnerships, sometimes open enemies. Neptune will bring in all kinds of interesting, artsy, spiritual, or addicted, or mentally not well partners. Yeah. The best case scenario of Pisces is that you meet, you know, some beautiful yoga teacher or meditator or martial artist, uh, a poet, a musician, uh, who is not using substances to get through life, someone who's eating healthy and they're connected to themselves and they're a guiding light. That is your best case scenario for relationship partners right now with Neptune and Pisces. And Pisces is your seventh house. So this is who you need to look for. But instead, what I bet you you're finding is alcoholism, too much weed or other substances, people who have some pretty severe mental health issues, people who, and even if not that, people who are escapist, um, which can be anything from a workaholic to somebody that's on video games all day. And what your tendency to do as a Virgo is to help them and help them and help them and maybe save them and maybe put order in their lives. And you might be with somebody who's driving you mad. Somebody where you feel like you're actually the parent instead of the partner. So with Neptune going through that there, that's what you're, you've been dealing with for several years. And there's a couple more to go. And now Saturn joined it last spring, and it's there for two and a half years. Now that, Saturn is a tougher planet, but because Saturn puts a bit of structure, puts a bit of gravitas in the mix, it might be helping you to have more compassion for these types of partners or for the people that are around you. It might also be helping you to select somebody who is healthier and that's where you need to go with your relationships. You don't save people or fix people. You find someone with compassion and with a connection to their higher power or their creativity. And someone that is not running away from their lives. Someone who's doing the healing so that you don't feel like you're the fixer. And you can do that healing together. That's what you need to be working on relationship-wise. Now, the next thing is you have Pluto that's shifting house. So Pluto just went into Aquarius, uh, as we know, on the 20th of January. And it's going to stay there for 20 years. And this is going through your house of health. It's health, it's service, it's extended family members, meaning cousins, grandparents, in-laws, sometimes pets, and it's also about service. It's the house that you usually rule is the sixth house. So Pluto going through your sixth house will bring some transformation to your health for sure. Now, you're already probably pretty diligent about your health. Um, it'll very likely challenge you to work on any um, anxiety that is underlying any health issues. It's a vast topic. I don't want to weigh in and say, oh, people are going to be healthy or ill or have surgeries or whatever have you. But 
Pluto in the house of health could mean anything. You might go through a full body transformation. You might lose 60 pounds. You know, you might suddenly become buff where you weren't before. You might have some other ailment that changes your life. Um, and you might learn a lot from it. it. It's going to transform you and your spirit through the aspect of health. Don't read this as it's guaranteed you're going to get sick. It's not like that. It's a health and wellness transformation. It could even be that you've never really looked at uh, eating well, and all of a sudden you're looking at a specific way to eat or Ayurvedic medicine for the first time or Chinese medicine for the first time or herbalism or supplements or veganism or something like that that maybe you've just never tried. That can be a, a total revolution in your health. So there's a lot of ways this can play out. And the other way, like I said, is it also rules extended families and grandparents and cousins and stuff. There could be a lot going on with that, whether that's getting closer to them, whether that's estrangement from them, whether that's, you know, um, helping them, serving them in some way, whether they're, whether they are having, um, some difficulties that you can, uh, assist them with because service is part of this house as well. So it's too big a group of, of, uh, again, of, of people and things to say, more precisely than that. But if Pluto were going through my sixth house, I would expect that I'm going to be probably forced to take better and better care of myself. And there's going to be massive amounts of learning that go into that and experimentation to find the right things and the right people and the right, the right, uh, you know, can be the right personal trainer could be the right uh, natural path could be the right therapist but you'll probably want to have a, a team of people that help you go through your transformations uh, could be a good nutritionist who knows I would also expect if it were me um, I would expect that there would be um, like I said some sort of shifting of the relationships around me when it came to the um, cousins and grandparents and stuff like that. I would expect some might get closer, some might get deeper, some might push away. Some, um, if they're unresolved, they might, you know, build up. Um, there could be also like a time of expansion of that, whether that's your actual, you know, maybe you get in touch with long lost cousins or, or get closer to a uh, extended family that you didn't bother with because you were you were, you know, focused on your primary. So there's, there's definitely, um, a lot going to happen on that level as well. And the service aspect, um, you know, you'll be, you'll be learning a lot of things about what is true service versus servitude, you know, giving because you desire to give because it makes you feel good versus doing it out of obligation Again, themes of saving and fixing people are huge with you. So we all need to learn this one, that we can't save people and that it's actually a disrespect to try to save and fix somebody. You can assist and be a support partner, but you can't do it for them. Otherwise, you're making them into a kid. You're, you're taking away their power and saying, I know better than you. So is it really a service to do that for someone, you know? I've thought about this many, many, many years, and I feel I've learned, but it was not easy. So there will be lessons of service versus servitude. Now, the last thing is a very good thing, and that is Jupiter and Uranus in Taurus, which is great with Virgo. And that's running through your ninth house, which is all about learning, expansion, and travel. Yay, right? So Uranus has been going there through it, this house since 2018. So have you been traveling? Have you been expanding your horizons somehow? Have you been learning about other people, other cultures, other cuisines? Do you have friends that are from different places, speaking different languages or different, you know, philosophical uh, perspectives than you? 
It's about intellectual and spiritual expansion. And Uranus will bring in some interesting people. And they might not last forever. They might not be for very long. Like, oh, you had a chance to quickly travel and have the life you wanted for a month. And then, oh, you can't anymore. You got to come home. Back to normal. You know, oh, there's another opportunity. So-and-so that I never thought of invited me somewhere. And I'm going to get to explore something I never thought. So that's super exciting. And that's sticking around until 2026. So you still have more time for this kind of nice trend that's happening. And Jupiter just adds more to it. And that's been running through your um, ninth house for a few months. And it's still got, I think, a few more, but a few more to go. I think it's June before it goes into Gemini. So this is a great time for you to be planning trips, taking classes, doing lots of reading or meditating, really delving into what are my values and beliefs, opening yourself up to all kinds of newness. And this is a happy, wonderful thing. So if you would like a longer personal reading where I can dive more deeply into your specific chart, pardon me, I can tell you exactly when these planets enter and exactly when they'll leave and give you those, those time frames as well as looking at other planets in your chart that will be impacting how these trends all play out. You can just email me at the bottom of this video, river.rain.info at gmail.com. Take care.